I was hurriedly crossing the street one day and I was just going across to the Lamborghini showroom. I'm sorry if there are any Ferrari fans out here. <laughs> and I wanted to book my first supercar. And at the same time, a friend of mine was calling and he said that, Alwyn, we've just about planned a trip to the Himalayas on a motorcycle. I was all excited. And we, we were going to go from Goa right up till Nepal to carbon neutral Bhutan and then back to Goa. And he also told me that next year we're going to go to Europe via the Silk Route. And as I was just about entering the showroom, I get a loud bang on my stomach. And all of a sudden, things had changed. And it was my little one saying, Daddy, wake up. Wake up. It's my first day at school. <laughs> there was no Lamborghini showroom around, you know. <laughs> and I was like, oh, man. <laughs> So later that morning, uh, we were all excited to take our kid to the school. Uh, the colors and the cartoons in the classroom. Uh, there were kids crying at the gate who just didn't want to enter. And it was so exciting. But let me share something. That same month, me and my wife, we wanted to admit our kid to a good school. We wanted a very good school. So we stood in line for 24 hours. So all schools give out a form which you need to fill and then later submit it. So on that weekend, me and my wife, 24 hours in advance, waited for a small little form that would be given out at the school gate. There were 200 parents waiting who would get the 120 forms. And I still remember I was 119 entering the gate that was closing that said, we are closing, the forms are out, and the rest of the parents can go. We got the forms. We, we go to great lengths to put our kids into good schools. We always want the best for our child. And if I may all ask you to engage with me a little, with a show of hands, how many of you think every child is a miracle? Right? That, that's me including, right? How many of you have had kids in school? Right? How many of you have been to your child's school? Very good. How many of you have been to their classrooms? OK. How many of you assume they have a safe, clean, and hygienic washroom? <laughs> That's the energy going down here. What's happening, right? How many of you think that there is something, or you're pretty sure that there is something as basic as hand wash soap into your child's school washroom? You see, my journey begins here. From fast cars to hygiene and sanitation, I'm a little confused. <laughs> I asked my child one day, just out of the blue, Sweetheart, did you wash your hands at school? And she said, Daddy, the toilets stink, and I don't like to use them. And there is no soap, Mr. Hand Wash. It's like. <laughs> my, wife was, my wife convinced me, saying, our kids will grow up just fine. Don't worry about it. And perhaps. I was thinking, why am I seeing all this? I mean, something as simple as soap in school. 
But that silly little episode of me asking my child whether there was soap in your, in your washroom perhaps stayed locked into my subconscious and it was there for the last five years. I, I lived in Kuwait in the Middle East. I worked there for 14 years and me and my wife recently moved back to India three years ago and we have turned into, me and my wife have turned into being free entrepreneurs, free-spirited entrepreneurs and we have a fashion business. But this calling to provide proactive life skills education in schools and communities and doing my part have put, have put the brakes on my Lamborghini though. Priority project at present is to promote school hygiene that makes at least basic hand washing and sanitation mandatory in schools, colleges, and institutions. Thank you. I want to thank Robert, my friend, and I call him my life skills boxing buddy. Robert, are you there? Thank you. For recommending me to Parenting 2.0, of all the other issues that I advocate for, from children learning to gamble and play the lottery at an early age, to kids killing themselves on street racing. So I never knew these were life, these issues, these issues would be safely landing on Mama Marlene's life skills report. They all fitted in there somehow. So Mama Marlene, from the bottom of my heart, thank you for being here. Thank you for coming to Goa, and thank you for parenting 2.0. When we moved to India recently, we wanted to admit our child into a new school. Guess what the criteria was? So I told my wife, let's check the washrooms. Let's make sure that the, the washroom, the safety, the sanitation, and hygiene are good, and that she's my inspector. And my wife probably had a short circuit she said, what the hell are you talking about? <laughs> and, well, this was my day, my chance. I couldn't let go. So I, I told her, I'll take your mom shopping and I'll drive around like a chauffeur for one month. Please go check the girl's washroom. She said a big no. I said, I'll do dishes for three days and three nights. She said no. All of a sudden, she showed me three fingers and she said, you do dishes for three months. And I said, okay. But did you notice something here? Do you feel there might be more moms and dads who have never visited a child's school washroom? So we finally got our child admitted into a good school and I'm very happy about it. But it's not about my child and my happiness only. It's about those kids I don't even know how many there are across India, across Africa, and globally, who are at risk every single day at school waiting to catch a disease and some other serious implication just because something as basic as hand wash is missing. Isn't that sad? Can we as educators and life skills advocates meet our kids somewhere halfway there is a movement called Global, Washing, Global Hand Washing Day, which is October 15th every year. I'm, I'm not sure if you knew about it. So every year, October 15th is Global Hand Washing Day. So that's a day to add to your calendar. So the World Health Organization estimates that 50% of child undernutrition cases are due to repeated diarrhea and intestinal infections caused by poor sanitation and hygiene conditions or lack of safe water. Good nutrition is not about more than access to nutritious food. It's also about the child's ability to absorb the nutrients in food a person consumes. And that ability can be affected by germs carried on a person hands, person's hands. Hand washing breaks that vicious cycle of diarrhea and undernutrition. Many infections start when hands are contaminated with disease-causing bacteria and viruses. 
This can happen after using the toilet, changing the child's diaper, coughing, sneezing, touching. I don't have to explain. So talk about contaminated surfaces in schools. Do you get the picture now of, of kids going to washrooms and then coming out without washing their hands because there's no soap, no water? So two major illnesses that are transmitted on hands are diarrhea and pneumonia. Together, diarrhea and pneumonia kill an estimated 1.7 million kids every year. So I'm thinking, do we have to wait for kids to die? To put up something as basic as hand wash in schools? Diarrhea alone is globally responsible for children missing a cumulative 272 million school days each year. And hand washing with soap, this behavior can be promoted and practiced at school and has been found to help reduce school absenteeism due to diarrhea, influenza, and conjunctivitis by up to 50%. Here's something very important. The availability of hand washing stations and water also helps girls to hygienically manage their menstruation. When girls decide to stay at home while menstruating due to inadequate hygiene facilities, their absences interrupt their education, leading to reduced academic performance delays in academic and social development, and this can impact their future earning potential. I could go on for another hour more, two hours more. Do you know that the teacher's washrooms are slightly better than the kids, right? Isn't that true? So, but here's what I found. More than 50% of the teachers don't use their own washrooms because they feel they're unfit for human use. It's the same with our kids. They don't like dirty toilets. Nearly 50% of school children hold to urinate in schools. They simply hold up till they reach back home. Can you imagine how uncomfortable that is? And how would they speak up? That's another life skills topic. How would they speak up, go up to the teacher and say, ma'am or teacher, the, the classrooms, are this, the washrooms are dirty. So, and those who decide to go to the washroom have no soap. Th there's something fundamental missing here, you know. How can we bridge this gap? What can we do? It's only soap. I, I once visited a medical school. A, a senior medical doctor referred me there. And there was those happy smiles, young medical to be doctors. And I felt good. I was in the middle of generation next. And they were, they were questioning me about something, about some illness that I had. And I said, if you could excuse me, I would like to go to the washroom. And to my surprise, in the medical school, there was no soap in the washroom. You see, it's, it's a vicious cycle. You, you're training doctors. I don't know what it is, you know. It's very hard to explain. So by now, do you feel like we're driving with handbrakes on? I, I, always, I always feel, is it just me? Am I cooking all this? But this challenge is for real. You can coax a child really loud and clear and say, wash your hands. But if there is no soap, how would he wash? I don't think I'm the first parent to say this, but I'm just about scratching the surface of things. And it is important for you to know that basic hygiene is ignored. 
And this safety aspect in school is really needed right now. During my course of the advocacy, here are the few challenges, when I, challenges that I learned and some of the heads of school narrated to me. They're serious ones, but I'm, I'll just make them a little lighter. So when I asked the, the, the heads of school saying, how can we change this? What, why can't we have cleaner washrooms? And here are the surprising replies. One person went, ha, 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 that's big budget stuff for private schools. I was thinking, what's going on? Another, another, school, uh, another school, head of school said, the soap pilferage is going to be too high. Another school head said, they will break those dispensers. And someone said, our kids are going to be just fine. They have high immunity. And someone said, they're going to waste more water. And, and someone else said, Alvin, can you imagine when 500 students want to use 10 washrooms in the 20 minutes of break? You do the math. My wife once thought that people, for people to take me seriously, I must get some gray hair. And ever since, I've had a 300% growth rate. <laughs> so if these life skills that we advocate for were wishes like my wife's, they would have come to life by now. I once traveled 700 kilometers to learn how to make soap. On the last leg of my journey to, to my destination, I had to take a van for eight people. Only eight people could sit in. As the van started, there were 25 of us inside. Two were on the roof, eight were hanging on the doors, and the rest of us were canned inside. But I still wanted to learn how to make soap. Very recently, I wrote a, little nice, a nice little quote. It happened instantly while on an experiment. So I went to this restaurant, and I realized the wash basin was very dirty. So I went, so I paid my bill, and I went to the restaurant manager, and I said, excuse me, sir, thank you, but I'm not visiting your restaurant again. And he said, why, sir? So here's my favorite quote. The state of your wash basin tells a lot about your kitchen. <laughs> that, that quote is open source, and you're all free to use it. So my daughter and my wife at home call me a hygiene police officer. And they also call me a soap sheriff. So my daughter and the kids around my neighborhood have developed this new sign. And you know, I, I'm very passionate about cars. I have a collection of about 200 cars in my office. And they're all stacked up nicely and neat. So every time the, the kids from the neighborhood want to come in and have a look at the, at, at the, at the cars, this is what they do. Because I kept asking them, do you have clean hands and clean feet? They must have got very irritated. So they developed this new sign by accident. So every time they come to the door, they go. <laughs> it gets crazy sometimes, you know, when you're consumed with a little mission. And when I come under the friendly fire of my wife, she says out of anger, ask Google if they, if they can make you soporoid and stop using Android. <laughs> Confusing. Last year, we had a new baby. She's now one year old. So my wife tells me, before the little one starts to go to school, can you make sure that all the schools around have a hygiene program in place? And she's right. It's a little ticking clock. There is a miracle born every single millisecond as I speak. 
Do you believe we can do something for their great future? It's only soap. I believe clean hands have the power to bring about a clean nation and thus a better world and thus a better future. If you want to if you want a clean and beautiful planet, give clean hands a chance. I would also like you to, like to give you the good news. I finally have a beautiful green Lamborghini. Do you want to clap? But it's a small little scale model. We got to start small. We got to start somewhere. Right now, one block, one school at a time. <laughs> Give clean hands a chance. I feel it will be worth it, and I believe it's possible. Thank you.